Shalom, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace, love, and salutations to all you occupants pushing this truth and truth and sincerity. I'm the brother I know from the GMS Atlanta Church. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. So this is a Pastor lesson, PSA, be diligent or get to stepping that he put up last night. Last night was April 16th. And uh, once again, you know, a strong exhortation from Apostle Tahar about doing the work. You know, here it is, we at the end of this thing and we have no time to be slothful. So without further ado, I'm gonna get a few precepts and Lord, when you edify. So this is 2 Timothy chapter four and verse five. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So we can't be half assing it, you know, like a, like the apostles say, you can't, there's no retirement in this truth. You can't say, well, you know, I did five years, I did seven years, I did 20 years. There's no, this is no retirement party for doing the work. Now this uh, word evangelist, let's get this right quick. Strong's G, 2099, Euangelistes, 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 it says, a bringer of good tidings, an evangelist, doesn't that say, uh, matter of fact, let me get it right quick, I think it's Isaiah 52, um, that's Jeremiah, excuse me, Isaiah 52, it's somewhere in here. I'm going to type it up. But I, I think I know where it's set. Isaiah 52 and verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy power reigneth. So... We're the bring of good tidings. How how can we stop? Okay, we're telling we're telling the, we're telling the majority of our people whether they hear or forbear that this oppression is about to end. Whether they hear or forbear that you won't have to clock in anymore. You won't be subject to taxes. You won't be subject to racial profiling. You won't be subject to getting racially dis, racially discriminated when you try to get a loan, when you try to get a house, so on and so forth. You will not be at the bottom anymore. So we have to continue even for ourselves, okay? Because the scriptures say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So we're a bringer of good tidings. Why would you want to stop bringing out good news? It says in Evangelist, the, the name given to the New Testament heralds of salvation through who the world enemy calls Christ, real name Yahweh Shai, who are not apostles. Let's get this word heralds. All right, herald definition. A herald, a person who carries or proclaims important news, a messenger. Okay, so we're the angels here on earth. All right, we're the messengers. Okay, we carry important news that Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed. Before that, Revelation 13 and 16, the Karagma is coming. You've already saw what happened this week. As far as the wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. So we have to continue bringing out this important news. So we shouldn't be in this last lackadaisical spirit. Somebody shouldn't have to motivate you. It shouldn't have to come to a point that Apostle Har has to do these lessons, man. You know, we should already be motivated to get up and publish this work, man. There's a lot going on right now. There's so much that's going on. This week, what happened... Um, with the whole conflict of Iran retaliating against Israel. That's just so much news entailed in that. All right. And it, the most important news is the kingdom of heaven. All right. So I think that's pretty much it on that. So we got to make full proof of our ministry, man. We got to endure until the end. We got to finish the work. All right. Now, um, I wanted to get. Let's get this one. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west 
and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood and this man is coming all right the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him but the lord is not going to lift up a standard against your enemies if you're being lackadaisical and i'm speaking to myself as well but i'm just saying the lord is not going to lift up a standard for anybody who's a slugger you know we talk about spiritual powers but the lord is not going to lift up a standard for somebody that's not doing what he wants them to do and this man is going to come in all right no he has a short period of time man he, he's a raging man esau is a raging man so we're going to need that spiritual protection all right we're going to need this psalms uh 34 and 7. so that goes into doing the work you know it's like that old saying goes i'll scratch your back you scratch mine all right we do the work we do the will of the heavenly father hey like it says in matthew 6 and 33 seek ye first the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you well what is it one of the things psalm 34 and 7 the angel of the lord the lord's name is yahweh and campeth round about them that fear him when you're doing the work you're fearing the lord because if you don't do the work all right and you last a days ago that should put fear in your mind you know and there's been plenty of examples of men who uh, got put to death after they fell out man and that's very that's very scary man when we came into this word, man, we made an oath to you. How about Shemel Shabbat? We're going to do this work, man. The angel of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Yes, we want to be delivered. Part of going into being delivered is doing the work. Okay, making foolproof of our ministry. So continuing on with the next scripture, uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 8. This is going to be a real quick lesson. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness we live in a world full of wickedness man all right i'm tired of seeing the black woman I, I had to throw that in there i always got something to say about the black woman but i'm tired of seeing the black woman man there's nothing righteous about the black woman or anything for that matter in this uh present evil wicked world that we live in. i'm just tired of seeing the black woman man all right i'm tired of seeing dreadlocks i'm try. i'm tired of seeing blunt rappers everywhere okay I'm tired of seeing empty McDonald's bags on the side of the highway. I'm tired of seeing chemicals sprayed in the air. I'm tired of seeing light pollution, noise pollution. All these distractions, all this noise in Babylon, dump trucks, cars racing through the streets. In the kingdom of heaven will be none of that. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. So that goes into uh, doing the work, man. You got a crown. You got you to gotta work for your crown, man. This isn't like Esau's kingdom where you just knock over people and commit all types of iniquities and then say you're a king. No, you got to. We got to earn our right to be called kings and priests, man. All right. So it says, uh. Let me see, I got another preset. Uh, Revelation 3 and 15. Revelation 3 and 15. I know that word. This is the words of Yahweh Shai. I know thy works that thou art neither hot, cold, nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The Lord's going to get rid of those individuals who are lukewarm. Lord willing, it's not us, man. We got to keep our foot on the plow. Like Apostle Hart said, hey, you got to keep that same momentum as when you first came in. You know, this is our first love. Nothing else matters. The money the money system is finished. Like I said, the black women is through. All the, all the women of our nation are through, man. How, you know what I'm saying? Nothing. Everything is tainted here. All right, it, it, the, uh, the 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 brother Shamak at a GMS Atlanta, the brother in my camp did a lesson, saying basically the American dream cost three point five million dollars. Who has that now? Okay, so we can't be lukewarm. We we wanna we wanna be included in the book of life. We wanna have we wanna go to the Father's house where there's many mansions. You know, like uh, Elder Kazat did a lesson last week about the kingdom of heaven. And he mentioned, hey, if you part of that number, man, when you come into town, people are going to throw celebrations for you. The heathen are going to try to do their best 
to make a damn good uh, impression for you. They're not doing that right now. You go inside their gas stations, man. They're looking at you like you like you're a suspect. You get no respect from the bottom of our nation, man. So it's just best for us to keep on plowing and being diligent, man. All right. So we don't want to be a, a, a lukewarm, man. You know, we got to pray to the Lord that the Lord doesn't take the Holy Spirit from us. You know, and just doing certain things in the spirit, you know, like reading, looking up words, going into the history, going into current events. It's just so much to talk about that one cannot be lackadaisical or lukewarm in this truth, especially in these last few ticking seconds, man. Now, we don't know how long we got, but it's very close. Okay. You just had the eclipse, what, two weeks ago? It, we're, just, we're just really close. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable. Now, I watched um, the apostles going live on a Tuesday with um, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Ramlob, Elder Manatizak, and uh, Elder Sakharan, and apostle gabar had made this statement he said nobody's gonna stop us from doing this work that's what that's the mentality that we should have you know lord willing we're part of that number but we got to be diligent we got to can't let nobody stop in a relationship your parents your so-called career we shouldn't let anybody stop us man like it says in uh, uh romans the eighth chapter man therefore my, my beloved brethren be you steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord and guess what there's going to be work in the kingdom of heaven you think it's just going to be you, we're going to be in the kingdom of heaven like nino brown sitting on some uh uh sitting on sitting laid back with a woman feeding you grapes uh, five six women feeding you grapes all day no we got work to do man when you read isaiah the 60 chapter man these other nations going to come to us and they're going to learn of our ways that yahweh shemel shai gave to us and these these law sections commandments going to be in our inward parts and we're gonna to have to teach the nations. If they don't get down, we got hey, we're gonna have hey, we're gonna have to lay them down. All right, if you get my drift. So it's always gonna be work to do. So we might as well start it right now and continue and finish strong on this side. And when we come come to the other side, we'd be good. It says, therefore, my brother, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I'm probably gonna title this that lesson. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain the lord is not a man and he shall lie all right if he said he's going to do something he's going to do it he's not a, he's not a man that he shall lie and let's get this word uh abounding strong's g 4052 perisuo 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 it says to exceed a fixed number of measure to be left over and above a certain number or measure. So we have to go above and beyond in this faith according to your own measure. I can't do what, you know, the apostles and elders do. I can't do what, you know, camp heads and regional camp heads do. I can only do according to my spirit. And likewise with brothers, you can only do according to your spirit. But in our, our perspective lots, we have to abound. All right. It says to be great, abundant. All right. A thing which comes in abundance or overflows unto one. Something falls to the lot of one in large measure. We don't want to abase. We want to abound in this ministry. All right. So, hey, that's pretty much it. I had a few more, but pretty much the point has been made. We have to continue to abound in this faith always abounding in the work of the Lord. So with that, I want to say shalom. Lord, when this lesson is edifying, shalom.